Hello again, Remodelaholics. We're back today with another great DIY tutorial to transform your home on a budget. Remember to check out our other videos and click subscribe below so you don't miss any of our weekly tutorials. Today's budget-friendly transformation comes from our contributor, Sarah, from 12 on Main. She has a gorgeous farmhouse style in her home, which you can see more of on her channel and website, which are linked in the description box below. For this tutorial, Sarah decided to enhance one room with an inexpensive board and batten feature wall, which is one of my favorite ways to give a room a little bit of extra character and add some really nice, subtle texture on your walls. I love this technique for living rooms since it's nice for large walls. Leave me a comment and tell me where you want this in your home and what color you'd paint it. I'm always a fan of white, but board and batten looks beautiful in any other color too. Sarah chose to have her board and batten go the full height of the wall and the floor to ceiling look is gorgeous. We did this in our last home's living room and loved it. It's a great way to incorporate a neutral white wall into your home without feeling flat or lifeless. Just a little bit of added texture goes a long way in getting rid of the builder grade blank walls. Depending on how much depth you want your battens to have, you can use one inch lumber, which actually measures about three quarters of an inch, or use a thinner sheet of MDF or plywood underlayment. For ours, we used a thin piece of MDF called a bender board that we found at the hardware store. Each board is only a quarter of an inch thick by three and three quarters inches wide. So we ripped them in half for a thinner batten style. We used one inch lumber for our baseboards and crown molding, and Sarah already had thick baseboards to work with. If you have thinner baseboards, now is a great time to upgrade and replace them to match the thickness of your battens. Be sure everything is well sanded before you start installing. You'll also need, or really truly want, a brad nailer for quick installation as well as a level, caulk, paint, and painting tools. To get started, clear the space and find the studs in your wall. You won't be able to nail every batten into a stud, but it's helpful to know where the studs are located. You'll start by installing a trim piece at the top of your wall, nailing it into each stud. If you'd like to have your board and batten go only part of the way up the wall like we did here in our former master bedroom, then you'll install a top horizontal board at whatever height you like, based on your style and the other elements in the room, such as doorways or windows. Next, measure your wall and determine how many battens or vertical pieces you want to install and how far apart they should be. Equally spacing your battens makes a big difference in making your DIY wall treatment look professional. It's worth a little bit of extra time and math to calculate before you dive into the project. Let me break it down for you, and don't be afraid to grab a pen and a paper and sketch it out too. We have more details on a post in our blog, so check that out in the link in the description box below. First, divide the length of the wall by the approximate spacing you want. For example, if you want battens about every two feet on a 10 foot wall, that gives you five board spaces, but six battens, since you'll want one on each end. Since we're determining the distance between the battens, we can't forget about the width of the battens themselves. So multiply the width of the battens by the number of battens. For example, a three inch batten times six battens is 18 inches. Subtract the total width of the battens from the total width of the wall. For example, a 10 foot wall, subtract 18 inches, leaves us with about eight and a half feet or 102 inches. Divide that number by the spaces you'd like on your wall. For example, 102 inches divided into five spaces gives you a width of 20.4 inches or just under two and a half inches between each batten so you can measure as you install each batten. To save some measuring time, cut a piece of scrap wood to that exact length and use it as a spacer along your wall like Sarah shows here in the video. If you're doing multiple adjoining walls, keep the spacing consistent along each wall even if it's not exactly the same on different walls. Once you've calculated and marked your batten spacing or cut your spacer, you're ready to install your first vertical batten. Measure the vertical distance and cut your piece accordingly. Place it where you want to install it, such as a corner, and use a level to ensure that it's perfectly straight vertically. 
Attach the batten by nailing every six to eight inches down the wall. If you'd like some extra security, you can run a bead of wood glue or my favorite would be construction adhesive along the back side of the batten that will be in contact with the wall. Using your spacing block or measuring, slide your next batten into place. We recommend placing the top at the right distance and securing with a few nails and then measuring or using the block to ensure the bottom of the batten is also the right distance and straight. Then nailing the bottom of the batten to finish the install. Repeat this along the length of your wall for each vertical piece. Next comes the putty and the caulk. Don't try to skip this step. It's worth the extra time and effort to make your wall look amazing. Be sure to check out our pro caulking tip linked in the description box as well. Putty or spackle all the nail holes and caulk along all the seams between the battens and the wall. Once it has dried, sand down any rough spots, then wipe down the boards and paint. You can paint the wall before you install the battens if you'd like, or you can paint it all after installing. Sarah prefers a roller to paint between the boards and the tops of the boards, then she cuts in with an angled brush to do the cracks and the corners. But I also really love a good foam brush, so you can try that as well. Once your paint has dried, you are done. Move the furniture back in, hang some art, and pat yourself on the back for making your home beautiful. Pair your new wall treatment with these easy doorway corbels for a gorgeous custom style. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to click subscribe below and give this video a thumbs up. It really helps us and we will bring you new videos soon. See you later.